Hello, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about the create a new brownie recipe assignment. This is the first of the last two assignments. So the semester is really flying by. We're almost done. So the create a new brownie recipe assignment is due on December 7th at 530 p.m. And you are able to, well, 530 p.m. for section two and then 8.30 a.m. for section six. And of course you have the option to hand it in late for a reduction in points on up until 11.59 p.m. on the eighth. So remember that the create a new brownie recipe assignment and the brownie box label assignment are sticking to the regular assignment due date timeline where Monday is the due date and then you can hand it in on Tuesday up until 11.59 p.m. at the latest for a reduction in points. So with this create a new brownie recipe assignment, it's broken down into two parts. Section one and section two. So I will dive into the middle of the rubric where it goes into the two sections first, and then we'll go back up to the top. So section one is your list of ingredients, and you're going to list the ingredients in descending order. And that's basically, it's just a simple list of the ingredients and the quantity. And the example here, I have almond flour, 500 grams, brown sugar, 500 grams, vegetable oil, 300 grams, Dutch cocoa powder, 200 grams, salt, 50 grams. Again, you want to make sure that you have all of your all of your ingredients listed in section one. You want to make sure that they're all listed in grams. It's going to take you some time to do the conversions, but it's worth the investment in time now to have them in descending order because it's going to help you later when you complete your both the nutrition facts panel and the ingredient statement for your brownie box label assignment. So spend the time early on this assignment to make the, well, it's still gonna take you some time. So it's either, it's better to just go get it done now. Uh, that way it makes that section go a little bit more smoothly for the next assignment. Some things to be mindful of are the specific, uh, the specific gravity of ingredients. For example, um, one milliliter of water is equal to one gram, but one milliliter of vegetable oil is equal to about 0.92 grams, I believe. So there's not, they're not, all equal and that's one of the confusing things with going from you know american standard units of measurement because they're all kind of messed up to be completely honest so if you are following recipes they're easier to do especially on a large scale if you have it set up to do everything by by mass so you can just put your container on a scale and, and, you know, when you get to 500 grams, you know, you have enough flour or almond flour or brown sugar, uh, et cetera. So super important that you have your ingredients in descending order, meaning the largest quantity at the top, smallest quantity at the bottom, and they must be in grams. If you give, if you submit teaspoons and cups and tablespoons, it will be considered incorrect and you are missing out on an opportunity for up to 10 points out of the 75 available points for this assignment. So make sure you follow the instructions here very carefully. Going back up to the top, Here's your reminder, metric measurements, measurement of all ingredients listed in grams, kilograms, milliliters, liters, et cetera. So basically you can, it has to be metric. 
It's easiest if you just convert everything to grams. But as long as it's, in, and I don't think anyone's going to have kilograms or liters uh, of ingredients, but just something to be, to be mindful of. There are restrictions to the ingredients that you're allowed to use. So that's part of the challenge. It's pretty easy to just create a brownie recipe on your own with no criteria. So you've been given some criteria, some limitations, some challenges that you need to navigate with the skills or the knowledge you acquired throughout the semester and your personal experience with working with different products. So ingredients, you can have no eggs. So an egg is considered, you know, a chicken egg or quail egg, turkey egg, but traditionally it's a chicken egg. You cannot have eggs in your recipe. But you are encouraged and you almost absolutely need to have some type of egg replacer. So I posted the lecture on the different egg replacers. So you are encouraged to use one of those. Also, you can, you can use one that was not mentioned. Something to be aware of, and I get this question sometimes, is about products that are marketed as a a vegan egg, you could use that product as long as it doesn't violate any of the other restrictions. So you can use anything as an egg replacer as long as it doesn't have milk, gluten, soy, or peanuts in it. So typically a, a vegan egg replacer may have soy in it. So if that was the option that you wanted to use, you would not be able to use it because you would lose five points for having soy. So if you put eggs in your recipe, you lose five points. Uh, let's see, down to the next one. No milk, no milk containing ingredients included. And I say here, remember the definition of milk is a lacteal secretion from an animal. So almond milk in quotes, almond beverage, cashew beverage, oat beverage. These are all perfectly acceptable, again, Soy is not, so a soy beverage you would not be able to use. And uh, all right, so moving on. Another thing to be aware of with the milk is that means that in your chocolate, in your, I said it before I finished the, my thought, in your brownies, you cannot use milk chocolate because milk chocolate contains milk. Uh, moving down to the next ingredient restriction, no gluten. So if you use a flour that contains gluten, you will lose five points. So try to not use a flour that contains gluten. For brownies, they are probably one of the most forgiving things because there, there are recipes that you could almost not need flour to begin with and you would still have a, a brownie, a desirable brownie texture. The next restriction or challenge is no soy, no soy containing ingredients used. And that is because it's one of the most prevalent and common plant-based alternatives. So, and probably the one that everyone is most used to. So we're trying to up the level of the challenge a little bit. So no soy containing ingredients permitted. The next one is no peanuts. So no peanut containing ingredients included. So if you wanted to do a peanut butter swirl in your brownie recipe, you couldn't use peanut butter, but you could use almond butter or some other nut butter that would have a similar desired effect, but you can't use peanuts. Something that I need to make clear again is that you are not actually baking this recipe. This is a recipe that you're creating. It's just a tabletop exercise, if you will, a thought experiment. You don't have to actually bake these. You, 
should not actually make these unless you really wanted to, but it's not for you. You would bake them for yourself, not for the class. So I don't actually make them again. It's a thought experiment. It's a theoretical brownie recipe that does not include these one, two, three, four, five ingredient categories. So it's an opportunity for you to showcase your knowledge on how you can make a product with these substitutions. So what you could and should do is look through the internet, uh, I was gonna say look through cookbooks, maybe look online, find recipes that you like, take bits and pieces of the recipes. That's especially helpful when you're looking for quantities. If you're making, so if you're making, say you're making a brownie that has zucchini in it, you wouldn't necessarily be restricted to finding a zucchini brownie recipe. You would just want to find different brownie recipes and figure out how you could, what the right amount of zucchini would be to incorporate or a very popular one, or it was, it's been popular, I guess, for the last 15 years or so are the black bean brownies. So you can look at different recipes to see how much you should put in. Usually recipes call for a full can of black beans, but a lot of times if you don't do it right, your brownies are gonna taste like dirt. Uh, I'm sure some of you have figured out a way to make a whole can of brownies, a whole can of black beans taste good in a brownie. But in my experience, usually half a can or a cup is enough to give beneficial characteristics to the structure without imparting a bean flavor or an off-putting flavor. So section two, section two is going to be 500 words because you remember th this makes up the remaining, uh, these 500 words make up your 2000 words total that you were evaluated on for this course as a general elective, you're required to submit 2000 written words for evaluation. So the, the word count applies only to section two. And here are, here's the grading structure. So your word count Adhering to the amount of words, it gets you up to five points. Having the word count placed at the end of the last page as word count colon with the number after it is worth 2.5 points. Make sure you do that. I would say of the 50 plus students currently enrolled in both of the sections, almost 10 or 11 did not follow this word count format and points were deducted for it. So it's an easy opportunity for you to get 2.5, two and a half points, which could put you, it could turn a B into an A or uh, A minus, which really can make the difference in your final grade. So please follow the rubric. And if you have any questions, let me know. Um, let's dive a little deeper into section two. Describe the type of brownie your recipe will make. Do you expect it to be cake-like or fudge-like? If you look online or if you look on boxes of brownie mix, a lot of times they have two different preparations. They'll have the standard preparation and then they'll say, if you would like your recipe to be more fudgy, then alter the amount of water and reduce the amount of eggs. So typically cake-like has more water to oil ratio and has more eggs in it. And fudge-like has less water to oil and fewer eggs. So cake-like has two to three, and fudge-like would have one, typically, 
from two as the uh, as the average and that's looking at six or so different brownie mixes uh in my internet search and also comparing it to uh from scratch recipes on allrecipes.com and, and uh, other other sources let's see you're going to explain the role of each ingredient that you included no ingredient is random and they all serve a purpose some ingredients require less, less explanation than others. So talk about why you put the ingredients in there. If you use black beans, explain why they're there. You know, uh, if you use bananas, you could, you know, they're to impart flavor, texture, moisture, uh, act as an egg replacer. If you put chia seeds, with water to form a gel, it's acting as an egg replacer. So explain why you're using each ingredient. That's part of the demonstration of knowledge on the role of the ingredients. Make sure you clearly, clearly identify the ingredient or ingredients that you're going to use as a leavening agent and how they contribute to the fi finished product. Are you using baking soda? Are you using baking powder? Maybe a sentence on what the difference between the two is would be a beneficial, again, to demonstrate your knowledge. Every year, two or three students do this. So I'm going to say it again as a, as a little reminder, so there are no surprises. Yeast is not a leavening agent used in brownies. It's used in yeast breads, like the lab demo that you observed about bread, yeast bread making. But for brownies, yeast would not be accepted as a leavening agent. Okay, so typically you're looking at baking soda or baking powder. Make sure you clearly identify the ingredients used as a chocolate source and how they contribute to the finished product. Are you using dark chocolate, semi-sweet chocolate? Are you melting it down and then adding it to the mix? Are you using a dry cocoa powder? If you're using cocoa powder, are you using unsweetened cocoa powder or are you using dutch processed cocoa powder which reduces the the bitterness and also lightens the color a little uh well it makes it look darker i i, I reversed that i'm sorry so unsweetened cocoa powder almost has a reddish tint to it and dutch will be a little bit darker because it's processed with uh an alkaline um ingredient to slightly raise the pH, uh, raise the pH to make it more on the basic, more toward a neutral pH, where unsweetened cocoa powder has a lower pH, it's, it's more acidic. Make sure you clearly identify the ingredients used as a gluten analog or a replacement. So anytime you see the, the word analog, it's meant as a replacement for whatever it is. So a gluten analog is something that has the characteristics of gluten and replaces gluten. So make sure you clearly identify the ingredient or ingredients used as a gluten analog and how they mimic the properties and characteristics of gluten in the finished product. If you go back to the yeast bread baking lab and we talked about this a little bit in the muffin making lab you'll remember that gluten aids in the product's ability to stretch and hold the co2 that is expelled and it also affects or gives a beneficial chew to the product, a little resistance when you bite into it. So it helps with the structure. So gluten analog could be xanthan gum or 
Um, pretty much xanthan gum is the most commonly used and it's used usually up to 1% of the total weight in the product. And that's uh, there to help form a gel and that gelation is what mimics the behavior of gluten itself in the product. Moving on to the next thing, what size pan is needed to make these brownies? For this, you definitely could look at other brownie recipes as a guide to make sure your ingredient, ingredient quantities are enough to fill the pan. And of course, the listed ingredient restrictions are an opportunity to get creative with alternate ingredients to replace them. So this is your, again, opportunity to showcase your knowledge and what you learned and how you can manipulate ingredients. I mentioned during our last class meeting that one of the groups in years past when this used to be a live competition for the final project was the final group project was a brownie baking competition. And before, well, actually this was, so everyone used to get zucchini and they would have to make brownies incorporating zucchini. And I picked zucchini because it has a lot of water, it's high water activity. So there's a lot of free water. There's a lot of liquid in zucchini. So when you're adding all that liquid, you need to make sure that the ratios of your other ingredients are adjusted in response to that. But there was one group, there was an avocado that was in the pantry for the, you know, there's a limited pantry of ingredients. So they took an avocado and they turned it into a chocolate frosting. And it tasted, it, the flavor was amazing. It tasted just like regular frosting. So if you think about what an avocado is, it's a good fat source. So if you add enough cocoa powder and depending on your taste buds, uh, how much, you know, uh, 10X powdered sugar to it to sweeten it for you, when a little bit of vanilla extract, it turns into a frosting. If you wanted to try this out at home, if you have an avocado that you're just looking for something different to do with it, you could almost make it like a pudding. But so you take the avocado, you mash it up, you add cocoa powder and you just keep mixing it. And then if you want, you sweeten it as far as you'd like, add a little vanilla extract and it makes a pretty good frosting. So that, if you're interested in trying that out, you should definitely give that a try. Not for the project, just for your own, own uh, knowledge and satisfaction because it, it's surprisingly, surprisingly good. So the last thing that we're gonna go over here, the last five points are for creativity and complexity. If you just copied one recipe from the internet, then that's not very creative or complex. So the more work you put into it and the, the when that uh, amount of work shines through in your submitted assignment, you'll be rewarded for that up to, up to five points. So that rounds out the 75 points total. Again, that's to create a new brownie recipe assignment. It's due on December 7th with the late submission for a reduction in points available for submission until 11.59 p.m. on December 8th. If you have any questions, you know how to reach me. Send me a message in Canvas or send me an email and I will get to you. I'll respond as quickly as I possibly can. Have fun with the project as we roll on to the end of the semester. Thank you very much and I'll talk to you soon.